uh, hello again I think we have a kind of the connection problem uh, but uh, we are going to continue again and so we were <coughs> talking and about very important things so it has gone suddenly I have no idea what happened but I think today there's a problem with the connection so so sorry about it I didn't understand what happened, but suddenly <laughs> it uh, the Instagram live session turned off. So this is the first time happening. This has happened to me. So sorry. I'm waiting for them to come. Hi. I had no idea what happened. But it's suddenly it's gone. It was weird. So this this is the first time it happened. So sorry, Mrs. Tina. I had no idea what happened, but there is is uh, something today it's it's yes m yes maybe the connection is not supporting us today yeah <laughs> no normally it was really great but this is the first time you know has happened, it happened to me so i know i'm so sorry for this so and what's the epic piece so Uh, can you please re repeat the question? Is is your question? What kind of activities do I use for my students? Do for your students during the period? The things that daily activities you were talking about, but suddenly the connection lost. So sorry about it. Yes. Well, uh, yes. I I I just want to add. Or, uh, yes, as the connection was lost, well, I, I would like to repeat that uh, I do obviously a lot of activities with my students to engage them effectively because effective engagement is important. For example, I very much encourage them for a peer discussion, group discussion. And uh, I have found that my students enjoy this peer work or group work very much. Uh, uh -huh. They also enjoy taking interviews, you know, my students, some of my students one group actually took interviews also as part of their assignment. So they also enjoyed that, which was something interesting and new for them. So, uh, well, they are actually trying to engage themselves with uh, lots of varieties of activities because uh, this is how we can uh, motivate them, you know, towards the lessons, towards the, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, but also we have deadline, of course, for the exam. So, yes, we are doing everything, but all the things should have a connection, relevance, uh, with the syllabus, of course. That's also that right. also is in our mind every time. Yes, of course. Wonderful, wonderful. It was really great activities, Mrs. Tina. <laughs> and so, Thank other you. question is actually you have mentioned it. But how do you motivate your students for online learning? Maybe you mentioned it, but uh, so what do you say them? How do you make them ready for the online uh, learning? Well, as I have mentioned, that uh, the entire courses are developed on Moodle by the teacher before the semester. So we take preparation before the semester. So when students actually registered for a course, actually uh, get everything on the very first day. They get everything on the very first day uh, from uh -huh. day one to day 24. Usually we have 24 classes uh, per semester. So they get in the entire 24 lessons on Moodle. So uh, they can easily connect and even they get the dates of their examinations as well. Yes. So we have our semester calendar before this semester. We have the entire course ready on Moodle uh -huh. before this semester. 
this takes actually a strong motivation for students even if they miss some classes due yes. to serious issues they don't feel lost they know that well everything is over there on moodle everything uh, is uh, over there in vlc so i can uh, join any time i can listen to the class recording any time i can uh, discuss with my teachers and my friends or batchmates any time so this is actually this has been working as a serious motivation since the beginning i must say i see i see great uh, uh thank you very much and my other question is maybe maybe it's, it looks a little difficult but i think uh, i would like to ask ask it about it. so do you feel do you feel that the current way education children fully prepares them for the needs of the 21st century can you please repeat the question please the current way we prepares them for the needs of the 21st century so how how we are going to prepare them for the 21st century exactly yes do you okay. think that you are fully uh, you know prepares them for the 21st century needs yes uh, that's a very good question of course well uh, as i have mentioned that uh, there uh, will we don't know uh will uh, teachers will are very important uh, figures of our society teachers cannot be replaced through technology but there is a question will uh, if a teacher doesn't know how to use the technology effectively uh, or uh, if a teacher doesn't know how to actually engage technology while teaching uh then maybe he or she would be in trouble in future so uh technological advancement is very very important adopting with technology is also very very important apart from the specialization courses for example mm -hmm. whatever we study for example even if it's the uh, our, our, my native language bangla education or even if it's about uh, economics even if it's about mathematics physics chemistry whatever the specialization is actually the thing is we will have to think globally will uh, let me share one interesting thing with you well in my university as i have mentioned that yes. daffodil is a private university but uh, uh, you would be glad to know that uh, every semester every year every semester we get a lot of international students in in our university so we wow. get students from uh, turkey even you know we get students yeah. from turkey wow great yes. wonderful yes uh, we yes we get students from somalia nigeria we get students from iran so you know we have varieties of students in the class so well we are thinking globally we are not actually preparing our students uh, to uh, actually handle only national issues or our students are not thinking nationally but they are thinking globally our students are doing so many things internationally they are getting scholarships they are everywhere you know and uh, will they are uh, they have been a part of the uh, strong networking since the beginning well uh, so i have seen that uh, if i am not adopting with all these as a teacher will then i'll be behind you know even behind uh, i mean what would i say my students will be ahead of me and of course it should be because uh, when while when i pursue my degree when i was actually pursuing my degree then i didn't have this much technology you know i didn't have uh, this facebook uh, well uh, i also didn't have my instagram account for example uh, i didn't have any twitter account while i was doing my masters but uh, now students are uh, students have everything they are getting everything uh they are having uh, they have internet connection every time uh in my university the internet uh, yes of course all these students are under internet connection so you know if i ask a student why are you attending the class because all the things are on google yes they can easily manage everything through google they can google and can find everything but still they are in the university 
they are in front of us they want to hear something from us they want to engage themselves actively uh -huh. so uh, yes of course this also indicates that we uh, need to think globally and for this we need to prepare ourselves uh, i mean that way accordingly and uh, yes of course there are several ways but uh, giving them their own responsibilities i think is the best way yes is the best way uh, to make them autonomous learners you know because autonomous learning is very very important yeah definitely well very as important. a teacher i i yes i i shouldn't take all the responsibilities of all my students because some day my shoulder would break of course <laughs> so yes of course they should take their own responsibilities and if someone is capable of taking his or her own responsibility i think that is the best start to think globally he or yes, she can great. be global of course uh, great great thank you thank you very much uh, mrs tina so my, my other question is about uh, about the government so what role what role do you think government should play in education yes of course government has very 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 important role to play in terms of uh, i mean what maybe sometimes modifying the education system sometimes uh, thinking about the uh, planning and policies so mm -hmm. yes they play a big part you know especially in uh, planning and policies of course uh, we we look uh, we look up to government but in my country you know if i talk about tertiary level of education well yes. uh, we have that freedom we have that freedom uh, to include uh, uh, to actually design our syllabus curriculum mm -hmm. so we have that freedom and uh, we can uh, design the curriculum according to the needs and levels and requirements of the 21st century and then we can submit that curriculum to the ugc okay, yes. which is the governing body actually if they approve then we can actually start uh, i mean executing the plan uh -huh. so we have that freedom at tertiary level and that's very good positive because uh, if uh, government imposes uh, i mean each and everything especially at tertiary level then sometimes it, it becomes difficult because we as as i have mentioned that we get students not only from english medium background but we also get students from bangla medium background we also get madrasa education students so yes it's very important uh, will to design uh, own way and uh, of course regarding the uh, assessment system uh, will most of the universities follow certain things but uh, then again will as teachers we have that freedom you know to assess our students for example i must say that my university has given us the entire freedom to assess students the way i want uh, well i can engage my students through forum and i can give them some marks for that for their in, i mean active engagement over there because they also need incentives yes so intensive is very very important this is also a kind of motivation i can also engage my students through for example uh, what would i say uh, if they actively participate in each and every peer discussion i can give them some marks two three marks or even five marks okay so yes. we have that freedom and uh, will this freedom helps us actually to engage students to engage us also ourselves also uh -huh. uh, throughout i see that's important yes that's important thank you thank you and <laughs> and can i move other question i think you are not i hope you are not tired at this time it's a little bit late there but uh, <laughs> i have just uh, two or three questions left uh, and the other question is uh what do you feel the most exciting or effective learning environment would be sorry can you please repeat yeah, sure. the question sure what do you what, what do you feel the most exciting or effective learning environment would be if we can ensure if we can ensure proper internet connection throughout the country if we can ensure uh, electronic devices well i think uh, we can expect a lot from our students and uh, the entire scenario would be changed and in this connection i would like to also mention that my university Uh, has a motto you know has a particular motto we provide laptop to each and every student 
Mm, not from 2019 yes not from 2019 but we have started this way back you know so uh, if you uh, right. are in daffodil international university when a student comes to our university we give each and every student a laptop so that wow. he or she can engage himself or herself yes globally he or she should think beyond his or her boundary so think big dream big and uh, will work right. harder of course you would be able to achieve everything <laughs> you are right definitely your students are very lucky about the laptops <laughs> if i could come that <laughs> can i get them one more laptop <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's great wonderful wonderful uh, and mrs mrs tina and what another question is what do you think about teachers professional development what can teachers do for their professional development during this period well uh, professional development is very very important if a teacher is not developing his or her skills even uh, if a teacher is not actually developing uh, gradually with his or her students then of course uh he is not an updated teacher he is a backdated teacher he doesn't want to mm -hmm. change change and adopt adaptation is very very important of course so yes for professional development well a teacher i believe should should participate in different conferences seminars workshops uh they should have some trainings of course of course it's a must and uh, during this lockdown as uh, we are uh, in our home actually we don't have any other options uh, i mean other than being at home every, uh, all the time so at this stage also uh, a teacher can professionally develop himself or herself through participating in different webinars uh, you know conferences both nationally yes. and internationally well every every <laughs> month i try to attend at least 20 webinars every month this is my target you know and uh, also i try to attend uh, one conference in every two month two three months so yes of course these are various ways to which a teacher can uh, develop himself or uh -huh. herself and this is very important if he or she wants to actually make his or her students uh, what would i say effective or uh, prepare for uh, prepare his or her students for global i mean from for a global world so that's also very very important and uh, will this is not a difficult thing anyone can join online webinars during this mm -hmm. lockdown there are lots of webinars lots of websites through which you exactly. would get information yes of mm -hmm. course so it's not a big deal at all and also you can participate in national and international conferences because you know if you are not doing research if you are not engaging yourself through various research projects then you won't get ideas actually well what people are thinking these days about a particular topic which you probably have studied 5 or 10 years ago so things have changed actually yeah, you are right you are right exactly and as you said in this day in which technology so it's very easy to join yes and different webinars and conferences or our courses yes. or online as you said i also um, i'm trying to you know enter or follow many webinars and conferences and i try not to miss any of yes of them as long as i find a time to do it <laughs> this is good yes. if we stop learn uh -huh. learning we stop teaching yeah yes of course yes yeah and other uh question is just two left and then we are going to stop it and the first one okay. what do you think about the future of education well uh, obviously it's uh, it would be challenging in future it's challenging now it's still challenging yes but it would be more challenging in future more challenging because uh, you know students these days uh, i mean are very very uh, what would i say uh, well equipped with uh, lots of electronic devices yes. they have smartphones they have laptops with them you know so they, and they they are familiar with different uh, blended learning platforms so they know everything actually they are familiar with everything now will to uh, connect them or to uh, 
will uh, engage them effectively in physical classes in future i think would be very very challenging because they may ask or they may share that ma'am if i can manage everything from my home then why would i join the class physically <laughs> so i i don't know yeah, whether right. we are going to face this question in future or not but well of course yes mm, once again uh, if we go back to our university days then will uh, gossiping with friends uh, you know not only with friends but gossiping with teachers uh, having a cup of tea with teachers and friends always has been one of the uh, i mean most serious concerns in in, in our concept you I know see. i enjoy tea with my students i enjoy tea with my students uh, at least once every month so uh, will this also energizes them energizes me this this motivates us so yeah. well uh, yes of course the future of education would be very very challenging but if we can uh, have that strong bonding with our students if we can create that bonding with our students i think exactly. uh, we will be able we will be able to i mean uh, cope up with all these issues and uh, uh, we would actually enjoy the challenges because as teachers it's always good to have some challenges you know other than the challenges we won't have anything interesting to do uh, we would have the same course same assessment criteria same thing same type of activities well uh, we also need some challenges so that we can see well what i am doing new in this course this time so yes of course challenges would be there but we'll have to find ways to overcome those challenges or issues and i'm sure that uh, we are going to find them <laughs> and and <clears throat> my last question is what's your, your motto or have well, you got uh, any motto well, <laughs> <laughs> uh will will i have uh, designed the courses in such way uh, so that my students feel that uh, this is not these this is not a course where uh, i'm going to engage myself very very strictly only with uh, sincere concentration every time or there won't be any fun fun activities in the course or i'm going to be very very bored at some stages so keeping all these things in my mind i have designed or i have planned the activities in such way that uh, my students feel that will Uh, the course is not only about the text or textual analysis every time it's not only about solving grammar problems every time of course not well we also have something to do beyond that so i think my motto would be uh, learning with uh, fun yeah great learning Maybe. with fun <laughs> and mrs mrs tina uh, as your last sentences what would you like to say to our listeners and to the teachers or educators all around the world well uh, i would like to uh, share one thing that uh, if we can uh, put ourselves uh, into i mean uh, in our, in our students uh, schools for example if we can think ourselves as students <laughs> then uh, it would be uh, i mean uh, better for us because only then we'd be able to think like our students because thinking like our students is important if we always think like teachers then sometimes some things may get difficult sometimes so uh, well of course we are teachers but sometimes we'll have to think like our students and uh, this is how uh, i believe that uh, we can engage them more effectively we can have uh, effective classes we can have uh, effective uh, feedback from our students we can uh, professionally develop so for all these actually we need student feedback every time and we need to think like our students as well and as i have mentioned apart from this apart from well professional development is very very important so uh, i would request all the teachers to uh, will uh, develop themselves professionally because uh, there isn't any other options uh, other than this uh-huh. please do participate in different webinars i mean take some training will attend some workshops and uh, please uh, do research work and present them in national and international conferences so that you can 
uh, get feedback from other members also regarding the same topic so this is how actually the scenario would change and would be able to cope up uh, all the challenges in future i see wonderful that's it thank you very much mrs tina and <clears throat> and also yes thank you uh, and uh, this is our i think we are going to end of our live sessions and i would like to thank you that you join my live session and thank you that you share your ideas you share your experiences with us and you give your time to us i know that it's really late in bangladesh it's i think mid midnight <laughs> now over there and yes. <laughs> thank you very much for your all your passion all your you know the nice ideas to us and also thank you very much to who listen to us and join and participate us and say nothing even if we have some technical and <laughs> problems during the live yes. session <laughs> and i hope you enjoy it i really enjoyed uh, the every moment that we have spent here uh, together and i hope that the, I'd, the, like to thank you. i'd like to thank you i'd like to i'd like to thank you especially uh and i'm grateful that you invited me to this teacher talks i'm very grateful to you although yes there were some uh technical issues but still i enjoyed and i would also like to thank all the uh, i mean attendees those who joined today's thank session you. thank you all of you i i can see some of my students some of my colleagues also in the chat box and there are lots of other students yeah, lots of. Uh, i mean lots of other people for not my students not my colleagues but they also joined i think so thank, thank you everyone for joining and thank you yeah. for inviting me to these teacher talks okay mrs tina and thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your night and goodbye to you and take care of yourself and bye see you maybe in the next time in another teacher talk session take care of yourself and to everybody bye 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 good night bye